Okay, this is my graphics engine. Um, it's designed to handle long view distances as well as having a decent amount of close-up detail at the same time. Um, it's currently using a height map, but the engine is fairly general purpose and should be able to handle other types of content like trees, foliage, buildings, etc. It's just that height maps are easy to generate with off-the-shelf tools and that's all I've created so far. Um, what's interesting about it is it's actually a hybrid of two different rendering types. You've got your classic polygon rendering, textured polygons, and we're combining this with um, rate casting into a sparse voxel octree using CUDA. And um, the reason we would do something like this is that they actually both have different strengths and weaknesses and they combine together pretty well. So to illustrate if we switch to voxel rendering only, you'll see that there's not actually a lot of difference um, immediately. The, um, the ray casting is pretty solid actually. It handles the medium and far view distances quite well. It's got a um, general purpose level of detail algorithm that's based on a fairly simple principle of determining whether a block of voxels project larger than a single pixel. If they do, then it's time to go and find load in the next level of detail down. So this all works really well and as long as you don't outrun the level of detail algorithm you don't really see it in action at all because it's always pulling in the information before you actually need it. But um, the weakness of this, of the ray casting, is that um, when you get close to the surfaces you can see that it's made out of all these tiny little boxes and while we can mitigate that somewhat by creating a larger voxel model, you can very quickly start consuming large amounts of disk space. This particular model is 4.5 gigs already. If I went down another detail level, it would be up to about 20 gigs. And the next one would be about 100 gigs, so you can get out of hand quite quickly. Um, compare that with polygon rendering, and that does a much better job of close-up surfaces. You have your um, linear magnification filters, etc. And you've got a lot more options for storing the surface in an efficient manner. You can use texture splitting, for example. So you can have a lot of detail up close and you don't see a whole lot of tiny little boxes. So that's generally the, the strength of the polygon rendering. Um, the issue is that you can only render it out so far before you then have to go looking for a level of detail algorithm, otherwise the number of polygons that you're rendering is going to grow exponentially and you quickly hit a point where it just slows down too much. So the issue with um, polygon level of detail algorithms is it's not really a one-size-fits-all, unlike with the um, voxel rendering. You have different ones for height maps versus trees and foliage, for example, versus other general purpose objects. So um, so we have these two different types of rendering methods and they have their strengths and weaknesses and the idea was to combine them together so that you basically get the, um, the strengths of both of them. So effectively we can see these nice long view distances using the, the voxel ray casting and we can still have decent looking surfaces up close using the polygon model. Um, this was a bit of an experiment. I wasn't sure whether it was going to have an obvious visible seam between the two types of rendering, but um, as you can see, it's it's really not obvious where the seam is at all. They fit together extremely well. So that's that's where it actually is at the moment. But, um, what I can do is I can turn off the level of detail algorithm. We can fly over there and. You can see that you actually do have polygon rendering up to a certain point and then the voxel boxes take over from that point. So up close it's quite obviously different, but you find that um, once you back out to a certain distance it becomes invisible. They essentially create um, similar enough images that the seam, you just can't see it. So. So that's, um, that's one of the strengths, the ways they combine together well. The other potential issue was that um, 
As we move around the map, we're continually switching from one type of rendering to the other. This content gets closer. So the question is whether that's going to produce visible popping, which depends on whether the different types of rendering produce different enough images that you notice. But um, you'll see that as you fly around, it's actually quite subtle. It's um, occasionally you often don't see it at all, and often if you do want to see it, you have to know exactly where to look. So they fit together quite surprisingly well in that regard as well. Um, the final thing is whether they share the graphic card resources, and once again it, it actually works surprisingly well. Um, and it's based on the fact that the polygon content is always in front of the voxel content, and the voxel content is raycast. So if you think about it for a second, that means that you can render the polygons first, and then when you get to the raycasting, you only have to raycast the pixels that haven't already been covered by polygons. So for example, in this scene, we're rendering roughly half of the pixels on the screen, and that that helps the two different algorithms sort of balance out the amount of GPU that they're using up at the same time. And that's pretty much it. You have this the ability to have nice long draw distances and decent looking surfaces up close, so you can have very large maps and still have a decent amount of detail in them as you move around. Um, the next step is going to be adding a bit more content, so it's not just a height map. I'm going to be adding some trees, foliage, um, objects, what have you, so that we can see how so, well the engine copes with that. In theory it should actually cope quite well. The um, <coughs> the voxel level of detail algorithm doesn't really care what you're throwing at it, so we shouldn't need to use billboarding or anything like that for the trees. It should just work.